much of the past year, Björk has been living in southern Spain, where she recorded her third solo album. I think there's something very special about living at the um, edges of, of continents, and it fe just feels completely different. And it shouldn't, you know, that you look out the window and you can see another continent over there. And, and it's just kind of like, it's a really healthy turn on somehow. The idea that every morning you could wake up and literally go to Africa. When I lived by the ocean there, I used to wake up every morning and have to walk for like an hour and, and like cross. And then I felt like I was in Spain. And then I could work and I wake up the morning after and I still hadn't just grasped the idea. So I had to do that for a month. And then I moved up here to the mountain. And, and the only way I can take all this in, because it's just so outrageous. And, and I, I keep just thinking of mum, just looking at a backdrop or something. And it's just like, they're gonna pull the curtains in a sec. These are the things that I own, that I usually have in my house, where I do all the demos. So we, we set this up and brought this down to Spain. When I did debut and post, they were very much like greatest hits of my musical passions for all my life. And I knew it would take two albums to do that. That's why I call them debut and post before and after of getting rid of the back catalogue almost, you know, gracefully, you know, because you can only move on if you do that, you know. So this is like a fresh start for me. And that's why I want to call this album homogenic or genus or genius or whatever. I'm still working on that because it's one flavour. It's just me now, you know, here. And, and it's going to be, instead of like all these different instruments, it's just going to be beats strings and voice. I knew that this album would be like back to Iceland, sort of what I'm about. But it's very hard to kind of start from complete scratch with no tradition whatsoever. But there were some pioneers who were trying to look at the landscape and, and the country and try to change that, what they saw and what they felt into audio. There are certain Icelandic composers and when they compose Icelandic music, they, you know, try to imitate geysers or volcanoes because the landscape in Iceland is very rough. It's, you know, we don't have like this, you know, trees. We don't barely have any trees. We have a lot of lavas, we have a lot of volcanoes, and there's a lot of outbursts of, you know, whether suddenly the wind comes or snowstorms. And that kind of sounds, I think she's looking after, and she's talked about that. She wants more of this raw sound, not this beautiful, European sound, maybe. To find that voice is, is very challenging, you know. And it's almost like you have to invent your own roots. And that's one of the reasons why I got the eight string players. I wanted them all to be Icelandic. <laughs> Well, I picked up some her uses of intervals, for instance, fifths, and that's very traditional in Iceland and actually very unique. Icelandic folk songs often use this interval of fifths throughout, you know, the whole song, and that and she uses that in her pieces that makes makes it very Icelandic. For instance, the hunter, the two cellos, they are playing two bar motif. And you know, one of them plays the lower note, then the other cellist plays it a fifth above. And and there, when you hear that, that's just right away, you know that's Icelandic. I wrote a song called Hunter, 
and it's based on um, what my grandmother told me on Christmas about two different types of birds who are um, birds that always have the same nest all their lives, like swans, and they always have the same partners all life. And then there are birds that travel all the time and they always have different partners all the time. And kind of like um, to make a conscious decision to stay a hunter. It kind of ended up being a little bit of a bolero, I guess. Maybe because it's Spain. That's the only song with the string arrangement I asked their daughter to do completely. One of the notes that we had, we discussed maybe trying a figure such as a bolero, you know, Ravel's bolero. In the course of the recording, we decided to exaggerate certain aspects of, of the string parts by having the strings doing sliding notes and kind of sluggish and slurring. When she sends me something, it's, it's pretty much done. What she, what I understand that, and that I, and I was correct in uh, understanding it that way, is that she really wants a color. She really wants the humanizing factor into tracks that are basically, um, how do you say, sequenced using different sounds or using electronic sounds. It's good also if we put one take down and have that as well. Mm -hmm. We come tomorrow, and we then we, go, more we can to listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then we know what to fix, Absolutely. if that works or not. But at least we put it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a different machine, but same size. And you have um, eight tracks and 100 noises. And, and you can make as many songs as you want. And a lot of my tunes for the last four years I wrote on that. It's, just, it's so incredibly uh, convenient. <laughs> Put the batteries in and you can take it. You can, you can write on the airplane or your grand's house on the top of a volcano or in a club or in a tube. And, and, and but this is a different machine, this is like a sampler. Mark Bell bought this one and he's just teaching me it. Which is a way of capturing like noises, like say acoustic instruments or you know other noises, but then uh, being able to change the pitch of them, you know, like to make them, you know, any noise into like music then, like it could be a door shutting for a drum sound. What I'd love to do live is kind of put lovely effects on my voice. a conscious choice that the beats for this album will be very simple, almost naive, but still um, very natural, but very explosive, like they're still in the making, which for me is very much Iceland. And we would collect very slowly over a period of almost a year, a library of noises. Iceland is geographically probably the youngest country on the planet. 
it's still uh, changing and growing and very raw. the eruptions at least a few hundred years ago then the lava was really thin and went over a big area very quickly and it went over lakes and steam broke through the, because of the pressure through the new lava and it made little hills of energy here. I wanted the beach to be like this.